Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at a one-tailed hypothesis test so we can answer questions from exercise 7c. Now what do we need for a one-tailed hypothesis test? Well, we really need our alternative hypothesis to be a situation where we consider the probability being bigger than our null hypothesis or less than our null hypothesis. And in this case here we'd only be considering one end of the binomial distribution. We'll come on to two-tail tests later where we consider both tails of the probability distribution. You've got to check whether the wording is phrased in such a way such that it's biased towards or biased against or think that it's biased towards, etc., etc., rather than they think that it's not a certain value of probability. Um, and it's really useful that when you're going through uh, a standard mathematical question that you put it into context. Let's give that a go. In the question here, we have a single observation x is taken from a binomial distribution b, which is 12 uh, trials and a probability of p, and the value 8 is obtained. Using the observation to test h0, the null hypothesis p equals 0.4, against the alternative hypothesis where the probability is larger than 0.4, use a 5% significance level. So what it means by the 5% significance level before we get onto the other phrases here is that is there a less than 5% chance of scoring, uh, of, of, of um, having eight or more successes um, in our experiment? And notice there how I phrased it as eight or more successes. Um, because we're going and we think that the probability is more than 0 0.4, we, we're going to look at the probability of uh, eight successes or more. Okay, so it's always, um, when you're doing a hypothesis test, it's always going to be um, your, your test statistic or less or your test statistic or more, and you're working out that probability. If the probability of scoring eight or more is more than 5%, then what we say is that, well, the data is going to vary. Taking 12 observations, there's going to be some um, range of values that, that we should ex be accepting. But if that probability is less than 5%, then that's when we start to get a little bit suspicious and we think, well, the, probab the probability is not um, 0.4 anymore. Um, we've given it enough range of variation in 95% um, variation such that the other 5% um, is not going to be um, highly probable. So to summarise this information here, now P0 equals... Uh, of p equals 0.4. Now let's give it a situation here. Let's let's take it as um, 12 penalties being being taken by this certain player, and they score eight of them. And their starting point is 0.4. They score 40 percent of their penalties, not particularly good. Um, and they go through some training. And we're going to assume then that after that training, their probability is increased from 40 percent, and they score eight of these penalties out of 12. Uh, after this training. So we're going to have a look at seeing whether the training has worked or whether the training has not worked and they've just so happened to have scored quite a high amount of penalties. So what we're looking for here is the probability of eight or more penalties being scored to be less than five percent. If we find that, that that value is less than five percent then we take the, null, the alternative hypothesis is the case in that the probability has increased. But if the probability is more than 5% of scoring 8 or more goals, then we say that that's, that's very um, probable of happening when the probability is 0.4. There is, we've got to allow some variation in the data. For example, here, if we look at the table and the graph here, there's a very high probability this person will score 5 goals very high probability it's got six, four, but there is some probability that they'll score maybe two goals or seven or eight goals. What we're going to be looking at here is this tail here on the right hand side. The reason we're looking at it on the right hand side is because because we assume that the probability is more than 0.4, so we look at the higher end of that probability. So what we do now is we're going to check the probability um, of scoring eight or more penalties to see if it's less than 5%. But remember, the way that we work out uh, a probability being more than or equal to 8 is that we have to flip it round and do 1 minus 
the probability of x being less than 7. So grabbing our calculator, going to binomial CD mode, 7 um, or fewer goals being scored out of 12 with a probability 0.4 gives us 0.427 roughly. And then to get to the tail part of that, we get 0.0573, which we can see there is more than 5%. So what that means is that there's enough of a random chance that they scored 8 goals out of those 12, such that we can't assume that the probability has changed. So effectively what we can say as a conclusion here, and you always have to write your conclusion, is that as this value is more than 5%, there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. There is still a more than significant probability that they have scored these eight goals, still having a probability of 0.4, a 5.7% chance that they will have scored eight or more goals. And we say that anything less than 5%, we say things have probably changed. More than 5%, we say that things are probably as they were before. All right, then let's have another look at another question here. Uh, the standard treatment for a particular disease has a quarter probability of success. A certain doctor has undertaken research in this area and has produced a new drug which has been successful 10 out of 20 times for patients. The doctor claims that the new drug represents an improvement in the standard of treatment. Test at the 5% significance level the claim the doctor has made. So what are the key pieces of information here? And it's good to summarise them at the start. Well, we have a binomial distribution here. They're either um, successfully treated or not. So we have 20 patients, probability unknown so far. We suppose that that probability to start with is a quarter, and that alternative hypothesis has improved more than 0.25. We have 20 trials, and we have a test statistic of 10. And we're testing at the 5% significance level. So what we're going to be looking at is to see whether this tail here that includes 10 or more patients has improved um, and is that less than 5%. If this probability down here comes out to be more than 5%, then what we say there is that there is enough of a random chance that these 10 patients have recovered when the probability is 0.25 so that we don't think that the probability has increased. But if this probability of this tail down here is less than 5%, then we say, well, that's really rare. There must be some explanation for why this probability is so low. And the explanation is that the probability of them getting better is now better than 0.25. So let's have a look at this. We want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10 patients being recovered uh, from this uh, new drug. So the way we do that is we flip it round and we do 1 minus the probability of success being less than or equal to 9 patients. Type that into your calculator and you get 0 0.9861. And then flipping that round to do a 1 minus and you get 0 0.0139. So that's effectively a 1.4% chance that these 10 patients have recovered given that... Um, given that the probability is equal to 0.25. And that's such a low probability, there's such a low chance that that happens um, at random that we think that something has happened here. And we think that the doctor has a very good claim to say that his new drug is successful. What we say is that as the value is less than 5%, there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And the doctor's claim, it appears that the doctor's new drug is better than it is previous than its standard previous treatment. Okay, so your key part here is always this final number here. If that number there was bigger than five percent, we would say that there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Um, there is enough of a chance at random probability that ten percent of patients could have improved out of twenty. But in this case here, it was one point four percent roughly. So that's really rare, that's real freak occurrence, such that there must be something wrong with our initial, initial um, hypothesis probability. Right then, hopefully that made sense. Feel free to go over and watch those two examples again. Uh, otherwise, have a go at these two questions here then.
Right, okay then, well done for having a go at these two questions then. So the first one, a random variable has a distribution x, binomial distribution with a number of trials 10, probability unknown. The observation that we've seen is that they have ha only had one success. The test at 5% significance level where the null hypothesis is the probability equal to 0.4 and the alternative hypothesis H1 is less than 0.4. So let's give it a context here. So let's say that they're taking some penalties. They're taking 10 penalties. Their usual success rate is 40%. But in this one case, they only scored one penalty. The question is, has something changed so that their probability of scoring has been lower? Or is there enough of a probability in randomness um, such that they've only scored one penalty, just having an off day or something like that? So what we're going to look at then, it's on the lower part of the distribution. So we're going to look at the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 1 penalties being scored, 0 or 1 penalties being scored. So what we have to do then is uh, substitute into our calculator here binomial cd, x is 1, uh, trials is number 10, and the probability is 0.4. And we get 0.0464-ish, which is less than 5% critically. Less than 5%. Now, if it's less than 5%, then we reject the null hypothesis. So something has changed to cause this person, maybe nerves or something like that, to have a lower success rate than 40%. Reject the null hypothesis. Okay, next question here. A single observation x is taken from a binomial distribution where we've had 10 trials as well and we've had a success of 5, so pretty good. Um, they are at the 5% significance level. Null hypothesis is 0.25, so quite a low probability and quite a high number of success given that they have... Um, they are looking for the probability to be more than 25%. So in this case here, given that we're looking for the probability to be more than 25%, we're going to be checking whether the probability of scoring more than or equal to 5 is um, less than 5%. And the way we'll work this out is 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 4. So let's have a look at that then. So 4 on your CD part of your calculator is 1 minus 0 0.922 roughly. So this is going to be 0 0.078. So 7.8%. And in this case here, this is more than 5%. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. So in this case here, there's a 7.8% chance that under 25% probability of success, they will have scored five or more. So there's, there's, enough, um, there's enough variation in our data to account for the fact that uh, they've scored five goals, say, in this penalty shootout. All right then, thanks very much for watching. Have plenty of practice on exercise 7C. Persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks for watching.